Reverend Crystal Cox here. I have never used a microphone before, so you'll have to adjust your sound accordingly and we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm going to answer a question because it's a question that I've had myself, and this is a question on one of my spiritual sites today. Um, I'm only going to answer part of it, and I'll do some more videos in answering more part of it. I recommend that you check out Bentino, B E N T I N H O, Bashar, Elan, E L A N, which was um, <laughs> Bashar before Daryl Inc. Okay, Abraham Hicks, Cryon, all of uh, Pleiadians like Barbara Han Clow, Barbara Marciniak. All of this information you listen to and you discern what is of the highest and best for you personally, what feels right to you. If you're just new to awakening, I mean, I've been awake my whole life in the way that I've talked to spirit, I've known things, but so what? It doesn't matter if you're just awakening or you've been awake your whole life. We still have these questions. We still have these, well, what now? Well, how do I do that? And for me, a lot of that came to a screeching halt when I heard about what people were calling the Mandela effect. When I realized that I had shifted realities, I was like, oh, so that's what all the esoteric, all the channeling, even the Bible, all the religious studies. And I've studied every, well, not every, but as much as I could get my hands on um, over 40 years. Let's say I started reading when I was seven, I'm 50. So uh, spiritual information as much as I could. Um, I've lost the plot. Okay, so they want some guidance. Um, for some time now, I've been feeling on a journey of awakening. I know what I need to do. I know what I'm aiming for. There are quotes and teachings and lectures from Zen masters and philosophers and awakened beings that teach you the way. They tell you the truth, right? And remember, there is no truth. There's your truth. There's your preference. We all create our individual reality. Okay, so they tell you the truth, they educate you on what is reality and how to perceive the world. They can only give you suggestions, you create your reality. The problem here is no one has ever been able to tell me how. I feel as though I'm stuck. How do I get to a place where I separate myself from the voice inside my head? Okay, so these are, these are different topics. Um, the voice in the head, um, you just say, not my circus, not my monkeys. Because the voice in the head is billions of cells in your body that have their own personality, their own voice. Okay, we've got these from our DNA. We've got these from our childhood. We've got these from every lover we've ever had. Um, exchanging bodily fluids, exchanging energy. We get them from strangers. We get them, we've got uh, different electromagnetic magnetic energies from a lot of different sources. And each one of those has a voice and they try to pop up and go, hey, you shouldn't do that. You're too dumb to do that. You can't do that. Oh, it can't be like that. So if something doesn't feel good to you, it's not your authentic self. It's not your true self. So when you're, first of all, when you're talking about the voices in your head and how to, which ones to listen to or what, just think of being in a crowded room. I mean, does it feel good? Does it feel nice? Does it feel loving? I mean, if the voice in your head's like lecturing you, you need to do this, or you got to eat that, or you got to do this, or you got to say this, then it's really not your friend, right? If it doesn't feel good, it's some sort of abuser in your mind. So just ignore them. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Okay. But as far as how to do it, right? So how do we do it? How do we awaken? How do we create reality? And I've been studying this stuff my whole life. And I've been in contact with spirit my whole life. And, and now still working on, okay, well, how do I create the physical reality that I want? I'm awake. BFG, right? Who cares? Uh, it doesn't change my reality. Well, when I learned about the Mandela effect, I stopped everything. I stopped exposing corruption because I realized I was then part of creating it. Okay, we shifted in 2012. We are in new earth energy now. We're not going to wake anybody up. So it's not like shouting from the rooftops, like, wake up, wake up, everybody wake up. It's, it's folks like this gal here who are awake and want to know, well, I'm awake, but what? What do I do now? Well, listening to the Zen masters, listening to all of these gurus and gods and past information and channeled and everybody's got something to say all this positive affirmation. It doesn't matter. Okay. That stuff is, there's no specific truth. There's your truth. You are quantum. You represent the living God. You create your reality based on your thoughts and your beliefs. 
but you have a ceiling. You can't go past because of the collective. Or so we were taught that before 2012. Now we can go further, but we're a little gun shy, as they say, right? We're, we're like, well, I don't know. This didn't work in the past, so maybe it's not going to work now. So what does awake even look like, right? Um, and Spirit's been working with me on what is awake? Um, awakening, creating my next step. First, I have to be in this step, right? So I can't, like get to step four if I haven't stepped on step three I mean I could jump it but right let's say it's a big one like from one to five or whatever you can't get there until you are here and and spirit's been working with me on noticing where I'm at and th this is the answer to, to this question in the, in the beginning of is to be present in the now and look for everything you prefer look for signs and synchronicities look for what you feel joy about don't look for what this person might think. What does mummy think? What does daddy think? What do the voices in your head think? What do the Zen masters think? What is the truth? Right now, just what do you want? If some Zen master says, well, I'm, you know, because right now all that's neutralized. All these people that are in the know and in the truth and know, all these gurus, they're not, okay? You're a channel. You can channel the divine. You can talk right to the living God. You create your own reality right now. First, you have to be present, and you have to not give your power over to all these Zen masters and gurus, okay? You have to be in your moment and go, what do I like? What do I prefer? Because what you prefer, listening to me to get to where I want to go, isn't about what you prefer, okay? And, and the Zen masters, the channelers, the healers, the speakers of old, they can't now do anything without working on their own stuff they have their own triggers they have their own traumas they used to be able to separate themselves they used to be able to channel information and bring that in to to help you and help themselves when they read it back but now they can't they can channel information sure you can uh discern what's best for you what's not best for you what feels good what don't and take that and apply it to your life but they're not right and you're wrong okay they have their own programs their own dna their own Every lover they've ever had, every lifetime they've ever had, every realm they've ever lived in. They have all that, all those busy bodies in their body giving them some sort of opinion on what they should be doing, or what they should be eating, or what they should be saying, okay? But you're the commander of all these voices. So you say, no, not my circus, not my monkeys. If it doesn't feel good, it's not joyful, don't do it. So in asking, what do I do now, right? What I'm listening to all these truth sayers. Well, there is no truth. And it, and if you've experienced what they call the Mandela effect, which is a shift in reality, there's no truth. There's only perspective, subjective, subjective perspective. So the lens that you see everything through is your own perspective, your own focus. You know, that theory that this house, the trees, nothing exists until you walk in and make them exist. Okay. It seems a little exaggerated, right? Because surely they're still there whether we exist or not. But we're the projector. We're projecting the reality. We get the reality that we focus on. Okay, so let's take a little bit more of a look at this. So for some time now, I feel I've been on a journey of awakening. I know what I need to do. I know what I'm aiming for. There are quotes and teachings and lectures from Zen masters and philosophers and awakened beings. Okay, you're an awakened being. Okay, now that you're waking up, there's billions of options and possibilities. So any particular Zen master, as you call it, they might have their own idea of what's exciting and fun and what they want to create in New Earth. Now is the time to create new of what you want. But if you're anything like me, it's like, well, uh, I don't know what my parameters are. I don't know what can I create. I mean, where's my house on the on the beach? Where's my, you know, where's how do I create all these things I think I want? What do I really want? Contentment, peace of mind. I mean. Um, well, let me check with the Zen master. Okay, well, they might give you tools, much like someone can teach you how to drive a car, but they can't give you every destination you'll ever go. Okay, every store you'll go to, everything that you'll buy, every adventure that you'll have, everything that you will do in that vehicle is yours. This human vehicle's the same. Okay, the, the person who sells you the car doesn't tell you where to go, how to go, or monitor it all, in theory. <laughs> So um, the, these 
gurus, these books, this channel information, and there's tons of it, and it's wonderful, and I read it every day, and I love it, and I've loved it my whole life. It's me. I'm the Hierophant, the tarot deck. It's my thing. The living library, the magic library. Love all that. But there's so much infinite amount of information on any given subject for on and on and on, and zillions into infinity, because there's this forever now, and it goes on and on and on. So you have to pick what you're interested in. What are you curious about? What are you excited about? Okay? And that's how you create the reality that you want. Because really, you can create infinite amounts of reality. And yeah, you're awake. The biggest thing to know about being awake is that you are in charge. So all of these voices in your mind and all of this mind chatter in every cell of your body that wants to create a certain reality and all this fear coming at you, fear coming at you, and the Dark Lord's wanting you to create their reality by focusing on their fear. And boy, that's getting drummed up, right? We'll talk about that in another video. If you want to hear me talk about um, political stuff, stuff on that level, check out Reverend Crystal Cox on Rumble, because uh, YouTube don't let you talk about none of that stuff, see, right, okay, so um, their teachings and quotes, Zen masters and philosophers and awakened beings that teach you the way, there is no way, they teach you their way, right now, they teach you their way, if you're looking at old information, they're teaching you a way, they're teaching you the tools, they're teaching you how to drive, okay? Then you buy a car, okay? So you got the mechanics of how to drive, you got the mechanics of how to be awake, but teaching you the way to be awake is up to you because there's no really teaching that because they, they might consider themselves awake, but that just means they're gonna go do what they want. And so what they like to eat, what they like to do, who they like to love, what represents um, life to them, they're going to do. And they might teach that way, okay? But that doesn't mean that that's about being awake or the way of the awakened. The way of the awakened is the now. Right here, right now, what you prefer. You create your reality by every thought you have right now. Now, there can be a thousand thoughts, every little cell in your body going, do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay, and you might be going, oh, and you might even be stressed out. But what action you take, that's the commander saying, all right, I've heard all your voices, and this is what I've decided. And that's what sets you in the direction. So the predominant thought that you choose, the action you choose, that's what creates your awakened reality. So you be here now. I pay attention to what's going on around you. I mean, really look at things. Look at houses. Look at yards. Look at people. Look at bicycles. Look at plants. Look at bees. Look at the plants in the store. Look at the labels. Really look at stuff and really be present in your now. Leave your phone in the car. Don't sleep with your phone. Put your phone on the kitchen table at night, okay? The constant input of the world is what makes you think that other people need to have input on your awakening. But your awakening is about you being awake and going, yeah, I get to live the life I want. Not necessarily a certain specific awakened way. Okay, so the problem here is no one has ever been able to tell me how. Okay, so to perceive the world, okay, they educate you on what, is to tell you the truth they educate you on what is reality and how to perceive the world okay <clears throat> right and there's a thousand books could, i could probably name a hundred off my head of really cool spiritual information that might tell you the way what reality is and how to perceive the world but they're not you i'm not you nobody's you how you perceive the world as an awakened one is by being true to yourself. You don't necessarily like or enjoy what the other people enjoy. Our excitement is our spirit guide showing us what's the next step. But, but a lot of the Christian teachings, and believe me, when I talk about Christian stuff, I don't mean nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was not a Christian. Okay, to be Christ-like is not what I'm talking about. That stuff's awesome. We'll talk a lot more about that. But it's about the Christian teachings of telling you how to perceive the world, of telling you um, follow the path with the most resistance, okay? If something's exciting and sinful and you have got to turn away and turn to God, right? Well, that's not the God within. That you are part of the living God. You are part of the whole, okay? You don't have to wait to be judged by some God on the other side, okay? You stand in judgment of yourself right now. 
you allow yourself to do or not to do. Your guides speak to you through your highest excitement. Oh, but what if I want to eat 10 pounds of cake? Okay, well then eat 10 pounds of cake. Odds are you're only going to get a couple pounds in. I don't know. But the point is, is that if you want to do something and you don't, because you think, well, it's for my own best good. For what? Oh, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to have a healthy heart. I'm going to eat so good and have a healthy heart. Well, who gives a flim and fly and flu, right? Because I believe, because I know for sure, and what people call the Mandela effect, I shifted from a reality where the freaking sun was yellow and now it's white. I shifted from a reality that was on the Sagittarius arm, thousands of miles now I'm on the Orion arm. My heart was over here, right? Uh, we won't get into all of this stuff, but my heart moved. My kidneys moved. Okay? I'm in a reality where so much has changed. So I'm not going to beat myself up about, oh, well, that's not going to be good for my heart. What? Obviously, I'm some sort of a hologram that moved into another reality. I got a different heart. I got a different sun, but I have the same consciousness or part of added to as the timelines collapsed. Talking about the Mandela effect, quantum shifts, and other videos. Um, if you want to donate to our church, bbgoddesschurch at gmail.com. If you have questions or want to work with me, reverendcrystalcox at gmail.com. There's a lot of different topics in a lot of different directions. The only thing to know about you being awake and what now, get to know yourself. Who were you as a child? What did you love? What do you really like to eat? Not what your mama or your daddy or your cousins or your neighbor or the electric company, or the store, the shopkeep, or the health board, or all of these gibbering, jabbering goo want to say to you about who you are. The first thing to know about awakening is who are you? You can listen to every, every guru in the world. Great. I love it. I love reading that stuff. But I do what feels right to me. Okay? Now, I get it. You have to have a dark night of the soul because it's like, I spent years just huddled up and just crying, just waiting for things to change and not able to change my mind, not able to change my frequency. And that was me getting rid of all the other programming of what everyone else thought I should be. Okay, I'm like, no, I will be who I will be. So no one can tell you how to perceive the world. And no one can tell you what reality is. There's no such thing, okay? There is no world unless you believe there's a world. If you sit in your house and... You never travel, you never watch a show. How do you know there's a world? And what is the world? And what does the world mean? And you don't need to listen to gurus to see how to perceive the world. What you do is get to know yourself. Every second of every day. Every thought. Whether it's what kind of potato chip. Whether you're going to walk or stay home. or oh, I don't really feel like going out walking, but I know it's good for me. I'm going to go where I'm long. You know, maybe if you did what you was, felt excited about and just sat down and ate some Oreos and watched Netflix, something amazing would come to you, right? You don't have to force yourself to, you, you, there's no authority figure in the room right now, but I'll put them in my head. You put in the preacher, you put in the nun, you put in the, the school marm, you put in the librarian, you put in the popo, you put in the, the judges, okay? Every board and everybody that thinks they have all these rights over you, which there never needs to be any, because government is bullshit and there's no such thing. How far away from God can you get? You love it and listen to the fuck, I don't know, some of my cuss, some of my don't. If you're listening to the government, okay? So whether it's the government or the guru, they're not you. Let me say that again. The government or the guru's not you. So every sort of authority system out there that you might be listening to, that's not for you. You might go, oh, that's interesting. Much like you might look at a recipe and go, oh, right? So how do you make biscuits? What is it? Like uh, baking powder and flour. and There's like four ingredients or something, right? But you can add raisins and you can add dates and you can add raspberries and you can add anything you want to it you just have the base okay so they might give you a baseline or a how to this is how you walk this is how you drive a car right okay but what you do with it is yours based on what you love okay you were taught that what you love is out the window and you gotta listen to the authority we're not in those days anymore there is no authority there is no one to tell you what reality is we're all out here on 
some sort of a well, I just pictured the Titanic movie, right? We're on a door floating out there in the middle of the ocean, okay? Especially those of us who've seen uh, a reality shift that we call the Mandela Effect. And many call that. I call it a quantum shift, right? What? Oh, yeah? You're going to tell me this, and you're going to tell me that? Oh, how to awaken? I'm going to listen to this guru, and I'm going to listen to this worldly authority. What? I moved realities. I woke up a foreigner in the same land. I woke up completely lost in a new territory. Didn't even know I was lost. Didn't even notice that exact moment when the sun turned white. I, who love nature and love the sun, did not wake up one day and go, oh, the sun is white. Whoa, trippy cool, man. It was a different color yesterday. No, who knows how long the sun had changed. So once you know that you shift realities all the time and you can shift then you want to learn how you did it and you want to do it deliberately. But you don't want to shift to the reality of the guru. You don't want to shift to the reality of the, the Zen masters. You want to shift to your reality. You can't shift to your reality until you get to know who you are. It's the time to get to know yourself. Okay, so no one can tell you what the world is. No one can tell you what world that um, the way to perceive the world no one can tell you that because you are the world. You project the world. So if you happen to pick up this particular Zen master book this day and they show you this, then you might perceive the world their way that day. But it's important as you're studying all your spiritual stuff, and there's tons of amazing videos, right? Um, I've been really into Brian Scott because he does what I do. He does it a lot, a lot more in depth, but, you know, getting some of the different spiritual books and sharing it with you. And you can go and study it, but he's reading the books and studying the books, okay? And and sharing with you. I mean, there's um, Jane reading this, Jane Roberts reading the Seth materials. There's also that. There's so much study material out there. You really have to discern. But first, you have to know what you want. And you don't know what you want until you get to know yourself, Okay, without the influence of a partner constantly, uh, 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 I'm going to filter my life through what my partner needs me to be or what my mama said I should do or what my daddy thinks, okay, or what my job thinks or what any authority thinks. If you try to follow them, that's not creating your life. That's creating the reality that they want to exist, okay? So I just want to hammer that one home again that no one can tell you what reality is and no one can tell you how to perceive the world. The world does not exist, okay? I am a projector in a blank room. Thoughts come to me? Oh, yeah, I believe that. I start to project a reality. It's a hologram. I interact with that reality. It doesn't exist without my permission. I get my permission by my belief, okay? So the problem here is no one has been able to tell me how. I feel as though I'm stuck. How do I get... To a place where I separate myself from the voice inside my head. And like I was saying earlier on that, <clears throat> you don't. Because there's a billion of them. Billions of cells in our body. And these cells all have their own brain. And they're all creating. We, as humans, we create things with energy. We move to realities where things are already created. Okay. Um, there's really... <clears throat> the voices in your head... Yeah, it's much like, okay, so you got, a, I don't know why I'm saying this, but a sleigh behind you with like 100 people. There's 100 people in my sleigh. And they all got somewhere they want to go. They all want to stop at a different place for hot chocolate. Right? Assuming there's that many places, right? And I can take, I can take the, the vote or the consensus, much like a real government, right? Oh, no. It's a dictatorship. It's a dictatorship, right? So hundreds of of uh, cocoa seekers in the sled, okay, like cells in the body. They all have some sort of an input and a voice. Some of them might be nasty and some of them might be nice, but you make the call when you take the action. Now, a repeated thought is also an action. So if you decide you're gonna affirm a certain thought all the time, that's an action, right? If, if you eat a certain thing, do a certain thing, you've taken an action on a belief system and you give voice to, maybe one of those voices agree with you. But ultimately, when you take the action, that's when you create your reality. And, and in some of the prior videos, I, I love the information about, you know, a bird can land on your door, but you don't have to let it build a nest. You can shoo it. And that's the same with thoughts that come in. Other voices in your head, you can let them in. You can go, okay. Just like spiritual information, guru information, you go, 
Yeah, consider that. Might consider that. Might have to ignore it because sometimes when you're used to so much negativity coming at you, you can't do that. You're too stupid. Oh my God, you'd be fine if only you had a lover or partner, you know, and if you're, and if you're filtering everything through your job and your partner and everyone else in your life, will they be okay with it? You will never be awake because you will never get to know yourself until you know hundred percent what you and what you want outside of every single thing that is outside of you, including, you know, um, if you see my videos on monogamy and, and, and marriage and you know, you, you just, it is really hard. And I don't really know that I've ever known anybody that's done it to be able to be a hundred percent yourself and be in a monogamous relationship. Okay. Because what will they think? They'll punish me. They'll withhold attention. I will die. Because before you met that person, you were alive, right? You'd be alive after, but you're like, Oh my God, I would die if they left me. Oh my God. So you alter who you are. You change your personality. You're like, Oh my gosh, that's cool. Oh, hey, that farmer's market looks cool. I like to check out. Oh, no. The wife's expecting me. Oh, I better go. Oh, that guy looks cool. Oh, hey, hi. Oh, yeah, I'd like to just, uh, you know, stop. And, oh, no, got to get home. The wife's expecting, you know. You're not able to be your natural creative self in a monogamous relationship. Uh, there are some, and, and I'm sure people will uh, let me know. Oh, well, well we do that because people like to do that to me. Oh, I'm 100% myself with my partner. Oh, can't do that. Oh, she wouldn't like it. Can't do that. So if you authentically want to do anything, and I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a meal, a movie, a lover, a study, a course, a swim, a drive. If you're not doing something you want to do because of what your lover thinks of it, you're not awake. Okay? Because that is how you deal with the voices in your head. First of all, you deal with it in the outside. You have to be in your physical reality. If someone's at you, at you, at you to stop doing what it is that you love and you stop, you still love it, but you're suppressing it. You're not awake. You're just laying there dead, creating the reality that they want, much like the dark lords do when they promote fear, 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 right? Take our medicine. Listen to our ways. We know better. We know better than God. We know better than Mother Earth. We know better. We've made up all these things and you should take them, right? Okay? So... <laughs> You're listening to all of that input and your partners and your extended family and your adult children. You have no idea who you are, okay? So until you've spent massive amounts of time alone, preferably in the dark in a car, or, um, you know, homeless really does it, but not at a shelter because that's freaking crazy making. It's a whole other level. But, you know, in tents and cars, you know, being on a mountain, you know, living alone for long periods of time and getting to know what it is that you prefer. You don't actually know the difference between yourself and your overlords, which is the medical system, the police system, the authority system, the licensing system. And as I just said, your partners, your adult children, your extended family that you let have an input and that you alter your truth for them. Okay. How, um, how do I sit with emotion without reacting? Okay, so these are a lot of different topics that the person's asking at, at once here, but how do I sit with emotion without reacting? <clears throat> so you're triggered, right? And you're in a situation. Um, uh, that's what I'm going to go with with the emotion thing. You just um, excuse yourself. Okay, you don't have to justify. If all of a sudden that person said something that triggered you, I don't believe in getting offended. That's just a trigger. But really what it's showing you uh, it hurts. It hurts you emotionally. It hurts you physically. You don't like being there. You don't want to be around that person. So freaking leave. Oh, it's not socially. Uh, we got to stay. We got to, you know, I, I can't react to the emotion. No, but your emotion. Okay. So how we create reality, the emotion is the gas. Okay. So we might think something, we believe something, but a strong emotion is something that creates reality. So if someone's saying something, something's happening, you have a strong emotion to that. You have to find a way away from that person, away from that situation, away from that topic. You have to admit to yourself, I don't believe that, I don't prefer that, and I don't want to be around others who do. Oh, but we should tolerate everybody. We should believe the same as they do. And I should still love them even if they believe this. Well, heck yeah, sure, if you want to. But what we are is reality creating machines. So every time we let ourselves sit in something emotionally soup, yuck, that we don't like, we create more of that and more of that to we're rarely breathing out of it. So um, 
it, the first step to not reacting emotionally is to react emotionally, right? So, but to respect yourself, to love yourself enough to say no, okay? So first of all, what I tell people uh, in my teachings about emotions is whatever emotion it is, whatever emotion come up, say, what must I believe to be having this emotion? So if I'm sad because of money, I don't have no money or whatever, I must believe I'll never have any money. I must believe I'm a loser. I must believe that you got to work hard to get money, which is bullshit, right? Because every sneeze that they do on Wall Street, somebody makes billions, millions, right? Thousands. But you got to work hard. You know, it's about what I believe, okay? What I believe. So in order to have a certain emotion, first you've had a thought, okay? And what, and what... So I don't know exactly. So there's two different ways here. There's a trigger and that's an emotion, but there's also just when emotions come up about something, uh, the best way for me to, to, to teach you is to say, first of all, ask myself, what must I believe to be feeling that emotion? Okay. And then to get to the root. So we get to our belief system. Once you identify the belief system, it evaporates. You don't have to do anything else. Okay. The other thing that works is logic. You go, okay, I'm really upset about why am I upset? You know, maybe the emotion someone canceled on an event, okay, with you. Why am I upset? Because I really wanted to go to that event. Well, you can still go to that event. Why are you really upset? So if you logically unwind it, it goes to the root of the problem. So why, why am I upset because I can't go to the event? Oh, wait. I can go to the event. I'm upset because that person hurt my feelings because they don't want to go to the event. Wait, what? So, so they're not sovereign. I'm their boss. I'm not okay unless someone outside of me does something that I think they should do. Okay. We're finding all of the root of what our issue is. So I'm upset with them. We planned this event for weeks. Okay. So that's not being quantum, right? Cause quantum and being awake is in this moment, whatever comes to you, you go, oh, well, okay, now it's this. Now I got this set of information, so I'll do this. Now I got this set of information, now I'll do that. And you just kind of chill about it, right? That's being quantum, and that's letting things come to you, and then not necessarily reacting, but making a conscious choice, okay? So how do I not react emotionally if someone's like, um, well, I know you paid a bunch for those tickets and I know we planned a long time, but I can't go to that event. Well, I could put them down and I could yell at them and I could scream and I could, or I could logically unwind it of why I'm really upset. I'm really upset because my feelings are hurt. Okay. You've jilted me. Okay. All of the things that people do is you blaming the other person for your own reactions. Nothing's happened to you. You're still going to the event. You're still packed. You still have your vehicle ready. And, and if you were going on a ride with them, you could change it or whatever, but you take the information and you go, oh, okay, well, oh, that's cool. You know, enjoy whatever you got going on. And then you're like, oh my gosh, spirit, bring me somebody new and, uh, you know, or, or whatever. The, so you have this ticket still, and then you just, uh, something cool and amazing happens with some different person when you're going with the flow. But when you resist it and you react to the emotions, like you go, how could you do this to me? How could you do that? So if you can't, if you can't not react, the key is to fake it till you make it, okay? Because though we might be feeling it, just like the bird lands on the step, you don't have to let it make a nest. So yes, you're like, oh, I'm really mad at them. And they could have told me yesterday and I could have had time to get someone else. And, you know, but you just, you just fake it till you make it. Be like, okay, well, that's the information that we're dealing with. So I'm going to head out now. Uh, blessings to you or whatever. Whatever you can do to get out as neutral as you can if you're triggered or if you have an emotion. So... Um, to not react, just don't react. Okay. So like a hot stove, whoa, you're going to have something, right? But then you just go and then you just put aloe vera on it or you deal with it yourself. Then you go into quiet chambers and you unravel. What is the belief system that made me feel that way? And then you logically unwind to go, well, did it really change my plans? No. Do I need them to enjoy the event? No. Do I still want to go to the event? Yeah. Did I only want to go to the event if they were going to the event? And this is obviously one example of what could be a million examples, but logic really helps you to emotionally heal because it helps you to unwind your belief system and help unwind the root of things. And again, there's tons and tons of examples on this. Um, right. So, right. How do I, 
sit with emotion without reacting. Okay. So, so then also there's the David Hawkins, a book about letting go. And so you just uh, find the emotion. You really got your feelings hurt. You got to feel it. Where is it in my body? So say you feel it here. Just look at it. Like listen to a fan or something in the background and just, just look at it. Just sit with it as if it's a belly ache, as if it's something that hits your stomach. Um, just wherever you feel that pain, it could be your arm anywhere. Just let it be. Just sit in it and just focus on it. No word, no stories, no poor me, no pity party, no running over certain things that were said. And don't even necessarily identify the emotion in this. Just sit with it and let it dissolve for as long as it takes. If you still feel it there, just sit in it. You know, go about your day, go about whatever. And it will feel much like, say, you were punched in that area. And then, like, you know then it just kind of heals over time. You don't need to put a story to it or a bunch of more energy and you don't need to react. So how to sit with your emotion is just look at it, find where it's at in your body, just be with it. And sometimes what I do um, is I just, you know, like I just lay down and love myself. Like, I love you. I, I love you. And sometimes when the thoughts won't stop, I just go, I love you, Crystal. I love you, Crystal. I love you, Crystal. You know, obviously my name being Crystal you obviously use your name and loving yourself and knowing yourself and, and saying, you know what body I I'm, you might, you know, sometimes I apologize to you, but I'm sorry. I got so upset about that and didn't trust you because when your your thought, you know, your thoughts contribute to the living God, you know, your thoughts contribute to creating your reality every single day. And so you know that you trust yourself and you know when that person canceled, whoop, ding, ding, down, right? There's something cool coming. All right, all right, something new, something different. So you can be excited about going to the event with the person, but you can also be excited that, oh my gosh, there's something new. I don't know what it is yet. I'm scared. I'm scared because I don't have a plan and I don't know what's new and I don't know. Okay, but but you stay open and then a different friend comes in or someone that wants to buy the ticket or you give both tickets away to some couple that it's their last night together forever, right? I mean, something cool will happen, okay? But you have to just sit with the emotion and don't um, don't put a story to it, okay? And then she asks, um, how do I act out of love, okay? So how do you act out of love, I'm going to assume this question is external. How do I be loving to you? Right. But I'm not going to take it as that because I don't believe in that. Um, You cannot be loving to anybody until you're loving to yourself. It's not loving to go, oh, well, I'm going to go to that event with you, even though I have this thing I need to do or I want to do. I prefer to do something else in my life, no matter what it is. But I've identified that it would be more loving to do what you want me to do so you feel loved and you feel okay. So that's kind of the energy that's coming with this. You don't need to make anyone else okay, okay? You don't need to, love is not letting other people have their version of you all the time, okay? To sit with love, to act with love, is just like the whole topic of this whole video. Know yourself, love yourself, be kind to yourself, listen to yourself. You can't control other people. So they're like, ah, I can't go to the event. Be like, okay, well, you know, there's that. You do something different. I got to go. I got some planning to do. Have a great day. So you can go figure it out. So if you're pissed and you're faking it, either way, you go and you figure it out. Okay. But love is being kind to yourself in that moment. Okay. It doesn't really, it makes, maybe make that person feel bad. It might be weird. It might throw some negative energy on them for their choice of what they really want to do. But, you know, that's, if you're loving to yourself, You'll be loving. It'll seem loving to other people because if you love yourself, you're not going to let yourself feel bad. You're going to be like, okay, well, oh my gosh, I love me and I trust me. This is going to be great. And even if I go with just me, I mean, I love being with me, right? I'm going to enjoy the concert or whatever that event is. I'm going to enjoy it by myself. Yeah, I wanted to go with someone, but, but spirit, if there's someone out there or different, you know, just put it out there and let new come to you. Okay. So the only way to really act in love is to be honest with yourself, true to yourself, love yourself touch yourself, hold yourself, hear yourself, listen to you and love you. Okay. That's the only way to sit in love. Okay. Because if you th- you go around like, well, I'm going to show you love and I'm going to, I love you and I love you and I love you while you're lying to yourself and not doing what you want to please all of them so that they're more comfortable with a certain version of you. That's not love in any form. Okay. Um, 
they might feel like they're loved because of their programs or whatever, but it's not real love. Abusing yourself is not love. Uh, neglecting yourself is not love. Not being true to yourself is not love. Okay. How do I get to a higher state? So you get to a higher frequency every day, every moment by being present in the frequency you're in. Noticing a really beautiful color or something neat. Or, or when, in the event example, when someone changes that, you get to a higher frequency by going, that's cool, something else will happen. Yeah, I'm gonna go figure this out. Or if they paid for the ticket, you can be like, oh, well, uh, like, what do you wanna do? You know, with the, like, be, um, being present. So you get to a higher state and a higher frequency by loving yourself, by being present with yourself, and by being awake in every moment. So you're seeing signs and synchronicities. You're seeing every plant and every tree, and you're really, you're really in your environment. You're really in your body. Okay, that's how you get to a higher state, by first being in the state you're at. Okay, that's all Spirit show me on that one for now. How do I ascend? Okay, so we're all ascending. Okay, so she wants to know what actions to take to ascend, okay? So we'll talk a lot more about that, but the only action right now to take to ascension is to be here now, okay? You can't, like, if you're just, you running and you're just jumping up, like, to a 50-store building or whatever, you have to go in, in the layers that you can reach from where you're at, okay? So you're going to ascend by, first of all, what does it mean to you to ascend, okay? What is your belief about ascension? I'm, you could probably bring up a hundred different Zen masters or, or gurus right now. All the different um, definition of his ascension. What is ascension? Okay. But what is it to you? And maybe that's not the best word for you. Okay. So if you're frustrated and you don't know what actions to take to ascend, then just put that word, put that word on the shelf for now. Okay. Your goal is to be content. Your goal is to be at peace. Your goal is to be present in the moment for yourself with yourself okay you can't ascend to the higher levels of like the example of the building unless you're at a level that's within reach you know that you can jump so you can't ascend anywhere until you're here and you're not here if you're constantly wondering what the next guru will say that you should do Okay, there is no what I should do. That's why they're all so vague about it. Like there's certain action steps, which which right now, I mean, Psychiana, uh, Brian Scott is, um, uh, I'm talking about the lessons of that, about the living God. They're kind of going in a, a weekly or a two weekly thing of some steps of, uh, but the, basically the steps are first you believe. So what is your beliefs? If you believe something, belief, believe something, then and you know it's a it's a belief that then, then you can move from there into the next steps of what will be your personal ascension but first you have to identify your beliefs you have to unwind from your your lovers your partners your past versions of you in other realms your dna all of your coulda woulda shoulda all of the rules and rules you have to unwind and step back from all of that and take the lessons from the gurus and the zen masters and say, oh that sounds neat that sounds neat that don't but there is no specific how to that they can tell you because it's about your personal preferences your living god within and without it's about what you prefer and what you want to create okay they can tell you based on what they want to create Okay, but the basics of it is that every single thought you have creates reality. The basics to know is that it's a holographic universe and you're creating it and projecting it by your own beliefs. So no one can really tell you what specific actions to take. You're present in the moment and you let it come to you. What is peaceful? What is exciting? Um, if they're like, well, if I step on uh, box one, then I'm this level of ascension. If I step on box two, and then some things, you know, you're kind of waiting for the collective. And it used to be millions in the collective, billions. And now we're having smaller collectives. Um, and, and people now uh, will be, um, what was it? I think uh, Simon and Bill Zora or whatever the other day talking about um, the separation of the egg and the white, right? The 3D and the 5D. Right now we're going through a separation. So the only thing, and you can't be like, oh my gosh, I want to go this way, so I want to be like this. I want to be, I don't want to miss the ascension boat. I don't want to be in hell with the 3D years. I don't want to be, but 
none of that really applies. All that applies is being true to yourself, loving yourself, which starts with knowing yourself. Okay, so all things to do with emotions, ascension, guru, awakening is all about first knowing yourself and allowing yourself to be your true self without being constantly influenced by outside people, governments, partners, relationships, adult children, jobs, you know, walk your truth. That's the only way to ascension, to love, to all of this is to first know you, love you, be kind to yourself and let yourself be yourself. God bless you. God has blessed you. Bye for now.